for you all look wonderful. You really do. And uh, I just want everybody to know that Father Dick, uh, this is his first Sunday Mass. He came back, and he came back for you. He came back for the first communion class. So we're delighted. Uh, yeah. And with, 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 he got it. He's doing very well, so we're very grateful to him. Very much so. Um, two points. When Jesus says, I live in you and you live in me, uh, we're talking about the risen Christ now. He's risen from the dead. He lives in us and we live in him. And that took place for each one of you when you were baptized. There's another name for it. It's called being christened. Can you hear the word Christ right in that? To be christened. It means you become part of the risen Christ. We're christened. He lives in you and you live in him. And as long as you stay united, wonderful things will happen. He'll be working in your life and through you. So that was the day that your parents and grandparents and families brought you to church and you were baptized into God, into the Father, Son, and Spirit. I, I want to tell you my favorite First Communion story, only because uh, I hope you'll remember it. And Jesus always told stories, and people would remember the story. But it's a true story. It's a true story. This was back around 1900. This goes back over 100 years ago. And there was a poor family in Eastern Europe. And they wanted to come to America. They wanted to come to the United States because they looked forward to a better life here. And it was very difficult for them to leave their village and all their relatives and friends. But the day they were leaving... Uh, the villagers got together and, and had a little party for them and wanted to give them some food for their journey across the Atlantic Ocean. They had to go in a big boat. And all they had to give them was bread and cheese. Cheese made right there in the village. Cheese and bread. So they gave them as much cheese and bread as they could carry. And they eventually got into the big ship. And they had third class tickets. First class on the top. Second class in the middle. Third class was way down in the bottom of this big ship. And they had a little tiny room where they all stayed together as a family. And the first day... They had breakfast, and they had bread and cheese. And then they had lunch, and they had cheese and bread. And then they had supper, and they had bread and cheese again. And this went on for three days as they're crossing the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, one of the children, a young boy, about your age, he couldn't take it anymore. He just couldn't take sitting in this little room eating bread and cheese, looking out a porthole. And so he, he snuck out. He snuck out and went to the top of the ship. And uh, when his family realized that he was missing, they were all upset and they went searching for him. And they looked everywhere. And finally, his father and mother found him in this big dining room. And he was seated at the table, and there was all this food and drink and dessert. Uh, and he was sitting there, eating all he wanted. And the parents came in and they said, Son, don't you know we can't afford this? We, we can't afford to have you eat like this. We're third class. And the little fella said to his mom and dad, he said, I found out. Do you have a ticket? They said, yeah, we got a ticket for the boat. I found out that all this food three times a day is included in your ticket. 
Okay. They didn't know. They didn't know that they had a right to come up from down below three times a day and have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and it was all included in their ticket. Well, you, First Communicants, have a right to come to this altar. You have a right to come to this altar to receive the risen Christ in Holy Communion. Every time you come to church, you have a right to come to the altar and be fed by the life of the risen Christ flowing into you. And it's all included in your ticket. And you know what your ticket is? Your ticket is your baptism. The fact that your family loved you and brought you for baptism. And so I'm going to ask you, before the day is over, will you go to your parents and grandparents and family and thank them for having you baptized? Thank them for that. That's why, because of them, you have a right to come to the altar. And we hope you do. Your, your turn will come soon. I, I, I baptize you. Your, your turn will come. It will come soon. Really well. Uh, so come, come to the altar every time you come to church and let God love you. Let God nourish you. Thank you. Oh. My gosh, I, I, that doesn't usually happen very often. <laughs> now, I'm going to 